What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Spark Your Life Financial Freedom. And today I want to talk to you about not paying off your credit cards in order to increase your credit score. So first I want to suggest that you should have three major credit cards. The first one should be a visa with your local credit union. Now credit unions are a little more strict when it comes to giving out loans, but they always have a better interest rate. Now, credit unions sometimes don't give you that high of a credit limit, but on the back end, when you get a loan, they always carry lower interest rates than uh, the larger banks do. Your second credit card, I suggest, is either a MasterCard or a Discover card. And with the different credit cards that are out there, a lot of times they'll give you incentives on gas or groceries. So if you go out and you get gas, sometimes they'll give you 5% back or 3% back or 2% back or even more than 5%. So go out and have your second card be a MasterCard or Discover card through really any bank of your choosing that most fits you. The third credit card I suggest you have is an American Express card. Now, I personally have a Delta card and my Delta card allows me to make big purchases because American Express gives you a pretty large credit limit. So whenever I make a big purchase, I always buy it through my Delta card and I always get points for flying, which I can use later. I fly somewhere at least once a year. So the three major credit cards you should have are a Visa from your local credit union, a MasterCard or a Discover card from just your standard bank, and then an American Express card, preferably the Delta card. Now, a lot of times there's promotions come, that come out with the American Express card. So make sure you keep out, watch out for that. A lot of times you'll get it in the mail. And I strongly suggest if you can get 50,000 points or higher with the American Express Delta card that you choose that card and at that time frame, that's when you should apply for one. Now, it doesn't really matter the limits that you get, but what I do is for my day-to-day -day use, I use my Visa. For my MasterCard that I have, it gives me 5% cash back on gas. So I just use my MasterCard for gas. And then, like I said earlier, if I make any large purchases, I use my American Express card. Now. I want to talk to you guys about not paying off your card in order to increase your credit limit. So basically what the credit card companies say is that you can pay them to increase your credit score. So as we all know, your the highest you can get is an 850 on your credit score. But what we don't know is that if you pay off your credit cards every month in full, which is what I was doing because I was trying to be responsible, and I would pay off every single credit card at the end of the month in full and not ever pay any interest and never accrue any late fees or anything like that, obviously, if you pay the minimum. But that was actually hurting my credit. So what I found out is if you carry a low balance on your credit card and pay a little bit of interest on your credit card, that'll increase your credit score. So what they don't tell you is, they meaning credit card companies and banks, is that if you don't pay your credit cards off and you pay a little bit of interest every month then that interest helps your credit score out so it can increase your credit score 50 plus points so i wasn't doing this and i was sitting around 730 7 720 730 was my credit score and once i switched and kept a low balance on each of my credit cards and just paid like a dollar or two uh, on each credit card maybe even a few bucks on each card every month it actually increased my credit score to almost 800 points. And I only did this for about three months. So that's one of the best ways that I came up with, as long as you don't have any other outstanding debts, outstanding loans, or you have any other issues uh, restricting your credit, as in a foreclosure or going bankrupt, that's one of the ways at a young age that you can increase your credit score. Now. Before you guys say, well, I don't want to pay all this interest, it's not really that much. So what I do is I keep a $30 to $50 balance on each of my credit cards every month. And I don't increase it from there. So what I've done is I say, all right, $30 to $50, I'm going to keep on each card. So my American Express, my MasterCard, and my Visa all have $50 on it. And every single month, I pay off each card up to the $50. So if I owe $100 on each card, I pay $50 on each card that month to bring the balance down to 50. With that, it requires me making a little bit of payment on each card for interest, but it increases your credit score. So that's one of the best ways I found out to increase your credit score. Now there's many other options to do it, 
but I wanted to let you guys know that when I found out that actually paying off each credit card hurt my credit score. So when I would make the payment and I would pay nothing towards the interest on that credit card, the credit card companies didn't really see that as a positive, so they treated it as a negative, and it actually hurt my credit score. So when changing that within three months, just paying a dollar or two in interest on each card a month, then it helped skyrocket my credit score within the next couple months. What's up guys, I wanted to interrupt you real quick to talk to you about this investing app that I just found. So this investing app allows you to invest every time you make a purchase with a credit card. It's super easy to set up, it's called the Acorns app. So every time you make a purchase, it rounds up to the nearest dollar and the cents of that purchase is invested in the stock market. For example, if you go and get a Starbucks and it costs $4.70, it'll round it up to $5 and that 30 cents is invested for you into the stock market through the app automatically. So once you set it up, you can totally forget about it all the way up until you retire. So I have a link in the description below that it gets you a free $5 to start off. Go ahead and click that link, set up an account, and start investing today. Back to the show. I strongly suggest you look at your credit card interest rates. So for instance, American Express, they always keep a high interest rate on their credit cards. So I never let that go more than $30. And my Visa, I've only got about a 6 to 7% interest rate on it. So that one I keep at 50. And then my MasterCard, either at 50 or 30, depending on if I want to pay it off or not. So always keep that low balance on each of your cards and just pay a little bit in interest every month. And those few dollars can add up to thousands in saving when you're saving for your first house or your first investment property. Because most banks state that you have to hit within a 730 or higher in order to get a lower interest rate. So let's just say that you're looking for a mortgage of $100,000 and the interest rate is 5%. Well, that's $5,000. But if you have a higher credit score, so 800, they might say, oh, your interest is only 4%. And I know there's amortization and it's more than $5,000 over time, but that just shows you in the short term what you can save. So a lot of credit or a lot of banks can tell you that if you have such and such credit score at this level, like a 730, there's a 4% interest rate on a mortgage or a 750, there's an interest rate of three. And if you have an 850, there's an interest rate of 2.5. I know they're not really all that ridiculous right now, but in sense that could help you. So thank you so much for watching Spark Your Life Financial Freedom. I'll see you next time.